a regular meeting yeah. of the Stillwater Planning Commission, Tuesday, April 17th. Um, I'll call this meeting to order. The first land use item for discussion and possible action, Stillwater First United Methodist Church. Specific use permit, uh, SUP 18-02, requesting review and approval of a specific use permit to install a monument sign with an electronic component at property addressed as 400 West 7th Avenue in the O uh, PUD Office of Plan Unit Development District staff. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Lance Gross with Development Services. The specific use permit before you is for the Stillwater United Methodist Church and is located at the southwest corner of 6th and Duck. The purple boundary indicates the subject site. It's currently zoned PUDO office. Public zoning exists to the east. Now, CB zoning exists to the north, which is commercial business, and also to the southeast. A PUDRT residential two family exists to the south, and a PUD a CG commercial general exists to the to the west. This is a subject, or actually a site plan that was uh, submitted. It shows the location of the proposed sign, which is right here. This is a little more, more detail showing the exact location of the proposed sign, which is right here. And this is an elevation of the sign. As you can see, the LED sign is located at the top and it's approximately 30 square feet. The stationary sign is in the middle of the sign and the address is located at the bottom. The LED sign is approximately 35% uh, of the overall sign uh, facade. This is a view looking to the southwest and you can see approximately right here is where the sign, the proposed sign will be located. The findings uh, for this application is a specific, specific use permit is required for an electronic sign in the O office district. The sign meets the intent of the design requirements for electronic signs. The sign is proposed at a major intersection on a commercial corridor and other churches and businesses in the area have electronic signs. Are there any questions? So am I correct in uh, assuming that if the address were not on the brickwork, the electronic sign is too big? That is correct. Yeah. So that means that the brickwork counts as part of the overall area of the they're using, by putting the address, they're using that to make it so that it's not too big. I believe the, the maximum size can be 40% for an LED sign. No more questions, thank you. All right, I'll now open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the item, please step forward and give your name and address for the record. Seeing no one, anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the item, please step forward, give your name and address for the record. <coughs> there being none, I'll close the public hearing and ask for staff alternatives. The alternatives are, <coughs> number one, accept findings and recommend that the city council approve the proposed specific use permit as presented. Number two, find that the specific use permit is not an appropriate use for the property based upon the impacts uh, to the surrounding vicinity and do not recommend that the city council approve the request. Or number three, find that additional information or discussion is needed prior to making a, dis a recommendation and table the request to a certain date. Discussion? I'm about to make a motion. Nobody has any other questions. <clears throat> make the motion to accept findings and recommend that the city council approve the proposed specific use permit as presented. Second. It has been moved and seconded to accept the staff uh, findings and approve. We will now vote.
vote. The motion passes 5 to 0. The next item for business. Is the Fountain Square Group LLC final plat uh, SUB 18 05 requesting review and approval of a final plat on a portion of property addressed as 1409 Southwestern Road in order to create seven lots and two outlots in the CS Commercial Shopping, shopping Zoning District? Yes. The Fountain Square final plat is located south of 12th Avenue and east of Western. The purple boundary indicates the subject site. It's currently zoned as CS, commercial shopping, and there's a little small portion right here which is zoned uh, agriculture. I believe that's for the, the uh, cell tower. And let's see, RSS exists to the north and also to the west. Public in the blue is located to the south and to the east. The northern half of this site is the original Fountain Square, which was developed in 2004. This is a, a view, street view, looking to the uh, southeast. You can see the existing commercial or office development. And this is looking to the northeast, and you can see the open area in the front and then the detention or retention pond in the back. And this is a picture of the plat showing the seven lots with the two out lots. And the findings for this, the final plat is consistent with the preliminary plat. Subdivision exception for the three lots not having frontage on a street was approved. Portions of the plat are within the FEMA floodplain and floodway and this development would allow the site to be fully developed. Any questions? I had a question and maybe you can take it or else the applicant can if applicable. Uh, could you tell me a little bit more about the floodplain issue? I was a little confused because it's mentioned and then there are some other spots where it mentions that the grading will elevate it out of the floodplain for structural, but then it says that it will be treated as if it is in the floodplain. It was a little confusing. Yeah, that, that's probably best answered by the, the applicant. That's, that's yeah, fine. That's when we had this come the preliminary, we had some of the residents of that street come in and discuss about the, the, the parking, I mean, not the parking, the traffic and the en entrance egress in there. Was, tra is, was that part of the, was that done now for this in the final? To, to know, you know, is that going to make any difference there yeah, on Western, just on the south side of Western? For a, a traffic study, yeah. if a traffic study was done? Hmm. I don't believe a traf traffic study was ever completed. Okay, Tom can answer. Hello, Tom Coots, uh, Development Services. Uh, we worked with the applicant who can also fill in some of the gaps, but um, the engineer uh, submitted a kind of a, a letter summarizing uh, the amount of traffic it was right on the, the cusp threshold of when a traffic study is when it's not required. Um, worked with the transportation director, and since the worst case scenario is that they would need to put in something like a turn lane or something like that, which already exists on this road, um, it was decided that a traffic study wasn't going to add anything for this development. I, I had another question. Um, there was mention, let me find it. There was mention there, subdivision exception was approved with the preliminary plat I haven't seen, but to allow some lots to not have direct frontage on a private or public street, um, is there a requirement for easements or reciprocal easements for those lots that would be bound or for parking? Or how, how is that gonna be handled? Oh, okay. The, and you can see on the map there are three lots right here that don't front the street, but there'll be a, there will be a, a private drive that extends to connect these. I can't, can, yeah, it's not on the 
What, is it not right? It, it, there, could you show it again? Yes, the, the three lots right here. Where is parking going to be for this? I don't believe a... Is it, is something that's there? Okay, the, the engineer can answer okay. that one. Yes. Thank you very much, then. Okay. I'll now open the public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the item, please step forward and give your name and address for the record. Good evening, Kelly Harris uh, with Keystone Engineering located at 923 South Lowry, here representing the owner tonight. Um, the owner is also here if there's questions that I can't answer as well. Can you pull uh, the mic a little closer to you? Thanks. Yes, ma'am. Let's see if I can go back to this map. Okay. Um, so I think the only remaining question that Lance wasn't able to answer was the entrance. So on the second page of this plat, um, we show all the easements and private access um, easements. So you, you'll see most of these, these seven lots here have a private access easement around the outside of them. So there's going to be parking all along this, these frontages here with buildings um, kind of set back. So we'll have on the second page of this final plat that's filed with the plat, those easements will be put in place. So it's, it's assumed that each lot will self-park? In other words, they'll meet whatever parking requirements they trigger? Yes, they will be required to meet the parking requirements. And so those will be evaluated as each individual um, lot is developed. And you have cross-access agreements between all the lots. Right. right, that's what's going to be on that page, too. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then the FEMA question, I forgot about that one. Um, so floodplain, so the reason that this triangle is cut out and made a common area, that's where the floodway is located. Um, and that's more heavily regulated than the floodplain. And so we have kept all of our construction out of that triangle. Um, I don't want to change any of that. So if you're keeping it out of the floodway, it's still within the 100-year floodplain, so the, the seven flood lots? Plain, yes. We have used the excess dirt that we dug out of the pond and built up the, the building areas, just where the buildings would go, up out of the floodplain. Floodplain or floodway? Floodplain. So okay. the out of the 100-year? Yes. Are you going to be doing a, a letter? Yes. So okay. we have turned in all the required documents through the city, and they've approved that or accepted it, and we've sum since submitted to FEMA, and we're currently going through that application. Any other questions? questions? And the pond is going to stay as part of the detention system for Correct. the urban runoff? Yep. And it handles the detention of the existing facility as well as the new lot? As well as this one, yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor of the um, item, please step forward. Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the item? All right, I'll close the public hearing and ask for staff's alternatives. The alternatives are, number one, approve the, uh, approve the plat as presented. Number two, find the plat is not in conformance with codes, specify deficiencies, and table the item. Number three, table the item to a certain date. And if, if it was to be tabled, uh, it must be acted within 45 days if the PC uh, seeks to table it. Questions? Questions? Discussion or recommendations? I'll make the motion to accept findings and recommend that the City Council approve the proposed final plat as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept staff finding and recommend to City Council for approval. We will now vote. The motion passes 5 to 0. The next item for business is uh, City of Stillwater Increment District Number 3, Stillwater, Oklahoma, AD 18 01, conducting the public hearing and public combat regarding Stillwater Reinvestment Plan, a Stillwater Downtown slash Campus Leak Project Plan. Staff. Or whomever. 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the uh, commission. My name is Dan Batchelor. I'm with the Center for Economic Development Law. And uh, our firm was engaged last year uh, on approval of the City Council of the City of Stillwater to work with the City of Stillwater to draft for the city's consideration a proposed project plan with the objective of authorizing uh, investment and reinvestment in the core or heart areas of the city to build up on the strategic plans which had previously been adopted by this commission and the city in order to strengthen the development and investment in the heart of the city and through its form-based code, the area in <coughs> particular that connects uh, downtown to the OSU uh, campus. Working uh, with your staff, uh, we have drafted such a plan uh, for your consideration. Under Oklahoma's Local Development Act, any proposed project plan that's adopted under that act uh, must be adopted by the city only after its consideration uh, and, and the receipt of recommendations by a review committee that is made up of representatives of the potentially affected taxing jurisdictions and three members of the public at large. And the, your city council created such a review committee and I, I think you are in receipt of the recommendations resulting from that committee's deliberations. In addition, the statute requires that a proposed project plan come to the Planning Commission for its consideration and determination on the question of whether the proposed project plan conforms to the comprehensive plan for the city or for the community as a whole and for your recommendation to forward it further to the city council for its ultimate uh, consideration. Uh, to give you an overview of how uh, such a project plan might be financed by using uh, the tool of tax increment financing, I want to ask the principal of our firm, uh, Lisa Harden, to uh, give you that uh, review and overview, and then I'll be available to respond to whatever uh, questions you might have. Lisa. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. I'm Lisa Harden with the Center for Economic Development Law. It's a pleasure to be here this evening. Um, Dan pretty much covered the highlights of, of our presentation, but we'll go through this quickly. Or you. I'll have a uh, presentation here on the screen. Um, as Dan mentioned, the role of the Planning Commission is to um, determine whether our proposed project plan conforms to the city's comprehensive plan and to make a recommendation. However, we thought we'd uh, touch a bit on tax increment financing and, and how it works. Um, oh, I forgot that. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay. So under uh, the state statute known as the Local Development Act, um, uh, there's a tax increment financing as a legal and strategic and financial tool used in areas where investment, development, and economic growth are difficult, um, but possible if using um, these tools of tax increment financing. They do not impose new taxes. Um, it allows a city to direct the apportionment of an increment certain local taxes to finance public pro project costs in order to stimulate development in the area. I'm going to jump to the next slide while I explain the increment. The increment is comprised of, in this case, a, the project plan has, has a ad valorem increment a, as well as sales taxes. And the portion of the ad valorem taxes are produced by the increased value of the property within the increment district as measured from the date the increment district is, is established. Um, and the portion of the sales tax collected each year is determined by a formula approved by the city uh, to be generated in, within the project area. We have statutory guidelines and general good policies to follow. Again, where investment, development, and economic growth are difficult but possible, we use uh, the tools under the Local Development Act. We do not use TIF to supplant normal functions and services. We do use TIF in connection, in conjunction with existing programs and locally implemented economic development efforts, such as improvement districts. 
and uh, we develop and apply clear standards, criteria, and limits that are applicable to all similar property and areas. City, the city and the planning department has made steps um, in the past to work toward the revival of downtown, um, including the going back to 2005, the core commercial districts master plan. Um, there was a business improvement district in place that terminated just last year. Uh, of course, the corridor redevelopment plan adopted in 2012 and the form based code adopted in 2015. The next step is this proposed project plan, um, which has uh, key objectives of reinforcing and strengthening the city's efforts to, to create a vibrant downtown community and a link connecting downtown and campus, establishing a walkable, dynamic destination area for residents and visitors um, to accelerate growth in the area, encourage and attract investment and reinvestment, generate quality jobs, and enhance the tax base. This map um, that you see now is the proposed project area and increment district number three boundaries. They do coincide in this particular project plan. That's not always the case. Um, so here they are one and the same. The, the increment district is defined as the geographic area where the increment is generated for payment of the project costs. And the area is, is the, in this case, the same geographic area where <coughs> development activities occur and where project costs may be spent. Some of the goals of the, of the your city's comprehensive plan include supporting the corridor redevelopment plan, encouraging improvements such as wide sidewalks, landscaping, seating, and additional parking, enhancing the community character, strengthening and promoting downtown Stillwater as the city's primary business, office, governmental, and cultural center, and providing opportunities for businesses, landowners, and the public sector to rehabilitate, redevelop, and revitalize downtown Stillwater. So the procedural steps are, as Dan mentioned, uh, review committee makes Findings and recommendations about the project plan, which after a very healthy process occurred on March 15, and the review committee did find that the project area and the increment district are eligible um, and found that there are positive financial impacts on the affected taxing jurisdictions and business activities and made a recommendation that the city council approve and adopt the project plan. Tonight, um, it, the next step is for Planning Commission to consider whether the plan conforms to the city's comprehensive plan and, and make a recommendation to council about the plan. From here, uh, the city council will have two public hearings. The first is on April 23rd to present the plan and provide information about it and answer any questions of the public. And there will then be a second public hearing that um, where there will be an opportunity for all interested to express their views and objections and support uh, prior to the city's adoption of the project plan if it so chooses. And that will, um, with approval of the project plan, will be establishment of increment district number three in the city of Stillwater. And thereafter, the county assessor will make a determination of the base assessed value and the sales tax base. In, the, in that area. Thank you again for this opportunity. Dan or I are available for any questions. Thank you very much. Um, we'll now open the public hearing part of this uh, discussion. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the item, please step forward. <coughs> Seeing no one. Um, Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to the item, please step forward. All right. Um, that then concludes the, uh, the public hearing part aspect of this land use item. And so we will now move on to the next piece of our agenda, which is um, plans, policies, and ordinances for discussion and possible action. Resolution PC-2018-01. City of Stillwater Increment District Number Three, Stillwater, Oklahoma, AD 18-01, approval of Resolution PC-2018-01. Uh, 
2018-01, determining the Stillwater Reinvestment Plan, Stillwater Downtown Campus Link Project Plan is in conformance with the Stillwater 2030 C3 Comprehensive Plan as amended from time to time and recommend to Stillwater City Council approval and adoption of the, the said plan. So this then is now um, just for us, our, our discussion. Well, I might, I might just say that I really think it's, uh, I know there's been a lot of work going into it. Uh, I know, I think you were our-, our I was the representative attended for, all the meetings. For planning commission, yes. appreciate that. Appreciate all, all the hard work of our consultant and our staff, uh, as well as the other members of the committee as well. Great presentation. Uh, I happened to sit on a TIF committee before this, so I do understand what, the amount of work that goes into this and behind the scenes. So. Again, appreciate that. Uh, I like TIFs. I think they're a, a, you know another tool in the toolbox for economic development, especially in, in areas that that really need them. And, and I know that's one of the criteria that you have to meet. And and uh, I think we had all discussed and taken some previous steps with with form base code and, and uh, that area of the general area of the plan. Kind of what the long term look of that area may be and it's very exciting uh, so I think this is another step toward that and uh, it has my full support I want to add the, the thanks to the consultant but also uh, to Mayor Joyce before he was mayor he was the chair of this uh, uh, committee and he did uh, lots and lots of hours of work putting information together and did a superb job uh, we had lots of open and honest discussion. We ended up with uh, the school board and the school representative voting for this, and I think this is a great plan uh, going forward. I think what's most important is after, if we get this through and we get some money in this plan, we need to keep the committee together or some committee together because it's very important that we have significant public comment on the projects we implement, because it, it can make a big difference on the success of this plan. So I think that's very important that we keep that in mind. Is the uh, Economic Development Agency of Stillwater responsible for that uh, prioritization of projects and Implementation, implementation to the extent that the city is implementing. Does, does, does anyone? It says in the uh, the plan that we were provided said the development <coughs> will be guided by future implementation policy committee to be determined at a future mm. point. So it's it's unspecified, and that's just my comment. As I, this is an odd beast for us because the C three plan has to do with development and actual projects and things this is no project there this is just the gathering of funds therefore the actual any specific project which may or may not be done under this plan is not being brought before us they're not building a hockey stadium or anything like that here so in essence we're approving a, a tax entity for a future purpose though unspecified at this point well, the, the purpose, purpose is very explicit in the range of projects that can be done. And, and it, need, it has to be in conformance with the comprehensive plan. Right. So. But I think what's really valuable about this is I've seen time and time again the opportunity for economic development to occur in a city and not to have any money set aside or any way to help in that plan and that not occur. What's great about this is we can put together some money, we can have it, and when economic development chances occur, we can go after that immediately and have significant improvements in the future. I'm not sure a hockey ring in Stillwater America would work either, so. That's what I'm saying. It's <laughs> yes. So we're but being asked to, to say whether it conforms or not, but we don't have anything to say whether it is, is in conformance or not in any given project. Mm. Those will come back before us anyway. So I'm, there's nothing, it's not against any yes. plan at this point. That's, I but it, to say that. it's not a blank check either, as he indicated. It's, it's very specifically proscribed in terms of 
the boundaries. Would either of you know, in terms of, it, it sounded like that it provides the, the taxing authority as well as the spending authority in terms of, it looks like there's two types of revenue stream in terms of collecting or taxes as they accrue from that starting point and the, the interval taxes will be accrued that way through normal time, but it looks like there, the other option is on the bond side where it gives the authority to, to bond against future revenues. Is that... Yeah, that's... that's. I mean, that's a standard. It's standard a, to have both uh, mechanisms, of course, yeah, but... Yes, it's standard because something might come to fruition where we need more than what we've already got in the bank. Sure. So we can borrow for future revenue so we can have a very positive impact from that aspect. Is, is the general feeling of the people behind this that they want to focus on spending revenues collected or, I mean, is the overall plan one that requires bonding to accomplish? Is there a sense of that? There's a sense that we not sure exactly what we're going to implement in the future. What we need is to have this money so then we can start analyzing what needs to be done. Sure. And we're going to set up a committee or, and the planning commission will probably be part of that committee. We'll make sure it's in compliance with future plans. Sure. But in terms of dictating what needs to be done, it is not. And I've been involved in a lot of projects where it was dictated what needed to be done, and then four years later found out, well, I sure wish we had done something different here, and you've done the wrong thing, and and you you specified this money has to be spent for this purpose, and now you have to run through hoops to change the money or not do anything. I like the flexibility of this plan. I, Based on my observations and and other jurisdictions in my past, I would definitely hope that the city um, works with the committees and uses their input and as well as the planning commissions because this is one of those unique situations where the city actually has money to implement things. I mean, m m uh, well, there's not really money public here, but it's one thing to have a general plan that says how things are going to go, but the opportunity to actually have the funds to implement it happening is always a great boon for a city, actually. So I, I hope it works out as envisioned. Well, especially when you can have public-private partnerships. Yep. And, you know, there may be projects here that, that we don't know about that, that this could help push over the edge and come to fruition. <coughs> Excuse me. Do we have a I, I move we recommend this tax increment finance district to the city council for approval. Seconded. It has been moved and seconded that the plan is in conformance with the C3 comprehensive. Is that what you were, what you were saying? Yes. <laughs> right, that it is in conformance with the C3 plan and recommend to city council for approval and adoption. We will now vote. Do you need to set up the Mm -hmm. The motion passes five to zero. We'll now have the approval of the meeting summary for dis discussion of possible action in the regular meeting of March 27, 2018. Move for approval. Second. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded that we accept the uh, me regular meeting summary of March 27, 2018. No choice in there. Oh, it, there. Ah, the motion passes five to zero. Um, the next planning commission meeting will be on May first, twenty eighteen. We have a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Do you have something? <laughs> Do we have a joint meeting still? It got canceled. There was a second to the right. Dusty, uh, yeah. dusty second. I second. Yeah, dusty. Okay. Got joint? Yeah. okay, I'm like, I miss it. Motion passes five to zero. Thank you all very much. Thank you.